Hey friends, it's Dr. Frank at P. Frank MD, and today I want to briefly go over the art of melting filler. So many of you are familiar with the term hyaluronic acid. It's the active ingredient for the most popular temporary fillers in the world. They come in different brand names. They come in different viscosities and thicknesses. Some are good for the cheeks. Some are good for the neck or the lips or fine lines around the mouth and the eyes, but they all contain the same active ingredient hyaluronic acid, which is a natural component, polysaccharide or sugar found in the skin. And one of the beautiful things about the modern fillers, temporary fillers of today is their reversibility. And there's a natural enzyme that the body produces called hyaluronidase, which melts hyaluronic acid that we use both in emergency purposes and to augment the shape or complications that we see of hyaluronic acid fillers. Now, there is an art to removing filler as much as there is to adding filler. And this is something that people don't really know. Now in emergency situations, if there's a problem with possibly a filler getting into a blood vessel or compressing a vessel or there's excessive bruising or any of the various complications, rare complications that can happen, we basically use hyaluronidase to flush the area aggressively to emergently melt it and relieve the problem that's going on. And this is really one of the greatest kind of safety blocks that we have um, in, in injectable therapy and why hyaluronic acid is used so commonly. But one of the most common, actually the most common complication with filler, particularly hyaluronic acid ones, is an aesthetic complication. Someone not looking great. Lumps, bumps, too much, too little, shifting a filler into the wrong place, it being placed in the wrong area. You know, a lot of it is three-dimensional. It's not two-dimensional in terms of where left or right, but also where in the level of the skin. And unfortunately, if you've gotten filler done by someone who doesn't know what they're doing very much or just bad luck, you can often see the filler, something called the Tyndall effect, have lumps or bumps, or just something that just plain doesn't look good. And this is where the art of um, filler reversal comes into play. Now, hyaluronidase comes in a few brands. There's one called Vitrace, there's Hylinex. Both are very, very good. There are subtle differences that I'm not gonna go into. Um, and it does go by dosage unit. Um, I'm gonna do a quick demonstration of how it's melted, but it's important to know that if you're not in an emergency situation, that it's very important that you melt down filler slowly because you don't wanna create a collapse sensation um, where you have to start from scratch and refill again. And like I said, there's an art to reducing filler um, slowly over time as there is to putting it in. Often when someone comes to me for correction, um, I'll often use low doses every few days to melt it back into shape. Sometimes some filler needs to be used afterwards to adjustment. And there are minor complications that can happen. I mean, most commonly you can get bruising. It's not necessarily from the um, needle itself, but the actual melting process can cause bruising. So you don't really want to over aggressively do too much at one time. Most of my patients that come in for augmentation downward, I'm basically seeing them every two to five days to slowly bring it down. We're gonna do a quick demonstration and it's important if you are gonna get filler reversed that you go to someone that is an expert in filler and is used to seeing complications, not just literal complications, but aesthetic complications where people aren't happy because it really is a highly skilled technique uh, to adjust filler and uh, we're gonna give a quick demonstration on, on how we do that. Okay gang, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick Place a nice little lump here of hyaluronidase. I'm sorry, of hyaluronic acid. This is product called Versa. You could use any number of products out there. You see how it's like kind of a gelatinous, bouncy product that doesn't uh, drool or away. It's a viscous gel uh, that can be used. And basically what we do is we inject hyaluronidase right in there. And what happens is you could see how it slowly starts breaking up and liquefies. We often massage this. Um, it, you do see some difference right away when you melt hyaluronic acid. Um, I always tell people you will see some difference right away, but it really does take 24 to 48 hours. As you, see, you can see, it is melting it, but it's not doing it 100% all in one time. I used about 20 units here. I'm giving it a few minutes, a few seconds, and you see how it's progressively liquefying it. This is what's going in on underneath the skin. People are always concerned that uh, is hyaluronidase going to melt my normal skin? I think um, that's a very 
It's a rare situation. You have to use very, very high potent doses of hyaluronidase to cause atrophy in the skin. Most of the doses we use for adjustment, even for emergency purposes, are not gonna cause um, any long-term detriment to the skin. It's a very safe substance. Some people are allergic to it, but uh, it's not something that people have to worry about. What they have to worry about most is um, how the removal process is being done. And as you can see here, it's almost completely liquid. So this is what you have to do if you want some filler adjustment. We're seeing, we're seeing more and more now with people getting fillers done, the need for cosmetic adjustment. And once again, you gotta make sure you go to someone who knows what they're doing, either filling or removing. Peace out.